Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video lecture, we'll be looking at biodiversity hotspots and focus on the biodiversity hotspots of India. Now, a hotspot is a region in the world which is able to satisfy two of the criteria. The first criteria is that it should have endemism. That is, there should be at least 1500 vascular plants which are endemic to that region. That is, they are found locally in that region alone. And thus, if that region is not kept safe, these plants are irreplaceable. That is, those species cannot be found anywhere else on the planet. And if we do not protect that area, that those plants will never be found or they'll go extinct. So that is the first criteria, that is endemism. And the second criteria for a place to be called as a hotspot is that these species need to be threatened. That is, that area should have lost at least 70% of its primary native vegetation. If a region is satisfying these two criteria of endemism as well as of being threatened, then we call that region as a global biodiversity hotspot or a hotspot. Now, in the world, these hotspots are representing just 2.5% of the Earth's land surface, but they are having more than half of the world's plant species and more than 43% of the fauna, that is the birds, animals, etc. So earlier, there were only 25 hotspots. In fact, this concept was introduced by a scientist named, ecologist named Norman Mayers in 1988. And at that time, he had given 10 hotspots in the world. This idea caught up and in 1999, the Conservation International, which is a US NGO, did a reassessment and a review and came up with 25 hotspots. It was 25 hotspots for a very long period of time. But then in 2005, it was increased to 34. In 2011, we added one more. And finally, we had the 36th hotspot in 2016. So as of today, that is in 2022, we have 36 hotspots. In fact, the last one to be added was the North American Coastal Plains. So there are a few hotspots which are present in two countries. So these hotspots are overall global regions. They are not based or they are not demarcated based on the country borders. And that's why you will see some hotspots are overlapping in two countries. So these hotspots have a lot of important endemic threatened species, endemic plants, endemic vegetation, endemic fauna as well. And that is why these areas are so, so important because there have been a lot of threats to these spots, threats like development threats like urbanization, pollution. It could be due to a disease that has taken up the species. Whatever it is, there have been a lot of threats which have wrecked havoc on the biodiversity in that particular area. And that is why to prevent them from extinction, they have been labeled this term of hotspots so that they can be taken care of very well. We can try to conserve that particular region. So these hotspots are shown in this particular map of the world. As you can see, the hotspots are present in different parts of the world and some of the hotspots are present in, you know, overlapping the borders of two countries. These are the 36 biodiversity hotspots that can be seen. Now coming to the hotspots of India. So in India, we have four of these hotspots out of the 36 global biodiversity hotspots. India is hosting four of the hotspots. The four have been named over here. That is Western Ghats and Sri Lanka. It is together called as one of the hotspots. Then we have Himalayas, Indo-Burma region and we have Sundaland. So let us look at each of these hotspots briefly. The first one that I have put up over here is the Western Ghats and Sri Lanka region. Now Western Ghats and Sri Lanka like shown in the map over here is the region, the Western Ghats is the region that extends from Maharashtra, the state of Maharashtra in India, all the way down to the tip on the western coast. That is, it ends in the state of Tamil Nadu here, right down at the south. We also have Sri Lanka, which is having a similar biodiversity and that is why they have been grouped as one hotspot, one region. Now, this region has also been uh, awarded the UNESCO World Heritage Site in the year 2012. And a place called Wayanad in Kerala is where you have the differentiation between northern ecoregions of the Western Ghats and the southern ecoregion of the Western Ghats. You can very clearly see the difference in the vegetation, mainly because the southern region receives more rain and in fact it is more species rich. So this entire region is called as the Western Ghats and here it is very important to conserve the species because it is having very, very high endemism. There are a lot of plants, a lot of uh, fauna that are distributed and they are limited to that small geographic area. The second one, the second uh, hotspot that I have shown you here is the Himalayas. Now Himalayas includes 
in india it includes the states that you can see over here that is it is extending from you have uh, himachal pradesh there is this uttaranchal a bit of uttar pradesh we even have sikkim so we have all these areas the uh, arunachal pradesh all of these areas assam which are coming under the himalayas region but it also extends into the our neighboring countries that is in, includes parts of pakistan we have tibet nepal we have bhutan that is included so all of the other china myanmar a bit of myanmar is also included all of these are also included in the entire region of himalayas now this region is characterized mainly by large birds there are mammals vultures rhino rhinos wild buffaloes in fact we do see red pandas there are a lot of snow leopards and tigers so all of these animals are endemic to this particular region that is the himalayas the next region that we have is the indo burma region now the indo burma region comprises in india it comprises of all the northeastern states as you can see over here it comprises of all the northeastern states except assam so apart from the northeastern states of india except assam and arunachal pradesh we have the countries of myanmar there's thailand cambodia vietnam laos south china is also involved in this so all of this together is what we call as the indo burma region we have a small bit of it over here now this region is characterized by quite a large number of mammals in fact six new six large mammals have been discovered in the last 12 years it is highly endemic region it is also endemic to a lot of turtle species in that particular area so this is the indo burma region and lastly we have sundaland sundaland is the region that is including uh, indonesia you can see here indonesia malaysia singapore brunei philippines this is the area which is sundaland in india from india it includes the nicobar islands as you can see over here the small spot nicobar islands is the area which is included under india so from india we have only nicobar islands but other than that there's a huge region in southeastern asia which is entirely called as sundaland and this region is very very vulnerable because there has been an explosive growth of the industrial forestry and animal trade which is risking the lives of several plants and animals over here so this region is endemic to turtles rafflesia flower that you can see over here there are a lot of monkeys tiger which are found in this particular region so these are the four different hot spots of india those are western ghats himalayas we have indo burma region which includes the northeastern states of india and sundaland which includes the nicobar islands of india i hope this video was useful to you thank you and see you all in the next video